own property, own that road. They had a say so in it, and they got that road closed. It was a, it was a dumping ground for people just dumping trash. So in a case like that, I would say, you know, if the property owners that are on that road, if they petition to get that road closed, by all means, I think we should do that. But, you know, some of these other trails, I know down around Smith Lake, there's a lot of dead end roads that go out to residences and stuff. And like some of the others have said, you know, it, it, it's hard to keep those paved. You know, some of them are dirt roads. And I don't know if I don't know, one of my friends told me that someone had called and complained about a, a road being gravel. And he asked me, he said, well, it was gravel when you bought that property? And they said, yeah. And he said, well, it's gravel. <laughs> you know, but that, that's the approach we may have to take. I mean, you can't go on a gravel road that's two miles long and be one of the residents down there and expect to get your road paved. But as far as abandoned roads, there are proper times to do that. And, but I think it should be left up to the property owners. Thank you. All right, we're going to move now to our closing statements. I wasn't skipping you, was I? Okay, that's right. You are first. Um, again, we have two minutes, and Leah will be your timekeeper. My name is Stanley Gardner. I run the County Commission of Bible West South Dakota County Place 2. In the next two years or four years, as a County Commissioner, I want to keep you in the Commission office, which I think you being unified in the Commission office brings, brings money and jobs to Coleman County. We work well with the, the state delegation, the federal delegation, and, we, and we've proven that these last 40 years. We've brought home a uh, little over $23 million in egg trip money. We've got a new interchange, um, job growth. Uh, and we've had, if I'm mistaken, three different industries with job expansion. You know, and we're unified in working with the chamber and all the towns and communities and mayors. You know, we uh, work with them. And, doing some projects, doing storm shelter projects, road projects. And on June the 3rd, I'd like to ask for your prayers and your vote. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Channel 27, Cold Times, and people that was involved in uh, allowing us to come out and talk to them. You know, you need to talk to them. You get us, and you need to find out about you need to find out whether or not they're qualified to do what you're asking them to do or what you're going to vote them in. You need to find out where their heart's at. Uh, first thing that I'm going to do when I go in office, I'm going to donate my first six months of salary to programs in the county that's going to improve this county. Now that's where my heart's at. I'll work with honesty, I'll work with integrity, and I'll represent you with that same honesty and integrity. I'll do what's right. I'll do the right thing for the people of color. Uh, whether or not we agree or not, if it's not the right thing, I'm not going to agree on it. Now, we have to work together, and I understand that. We've got to work with you. We've got to be a team, but you've got to build a team. A team has to be built, not assumed. We can't keep making uh, the same decisions and expecting different results. We can't keep doing it. We have to encourage our economic growth. And I appreciate, like I said earlier, the Chamber for doing this. One thing that I want to look at that I have a passion for is, is high-tech jobs, high-tech industry here in Coleman. We've got a diamond here in Coleman County with Wallace State Community College. Uh, we want to encourage our kids to stay in Coleman County when they go out and commit themselves to a higher education. We want to maintain our economic stability. I drove down 31 yesterday there was four signs that said uh, help wanted. You know, so there's jobs in Coleman, and then those jobs are in Coleman a lot of the reason because of small business owners. Uh, we have to maintain and work hard to build cohesion in our departments, and we have to improve our employee morale. I would love an opportunity to earn your respect. Thank you. Mr. Graves. <coughs> Well, 14 years experience for the county, I, I feel that I'm, I'm probably the best qualified person uh, of, uh, of all of these sitting up here to understand the dynamics of county county money, how it flows, where it comes from, how it's spent, 
the, the limitations on what you can spend it for, and simply the sometimes the limitations period that you have that you can't you can't go in that direction because there's simply no money there. I've, I've traveled to Montgomery. I don't know how many times in the, in the period as county administrator and as chairman both uh, trying to get funds down there between the the uh, Alabama Department of Transportation uh, director or sometimes the governor. Uh, other agencies down there, anything. If we get some funds, you'll fall into Columbia County. I've traveled to Washington, D.C. and been with Congressman Adderhole, Senator Shelby, many, many times. Now, 2003, I went up there and, 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 and was able to sit down with those two. Uh, Gordon Dunning was Mayor Bithope at the time, and it represented uh, uh, Bithope because of the inter new interchange 220, 222. We spent three days up there working to get some funds to start the process of getting an interchange down there. We came away with $5 million, and that started the ball rolling on, on the new interchange. But here we are, 2014, 11 years later, but we got a promise from, from Mr. John Cooper, who was our director, that this summer, this summer, dirt will be broken on that, on that interchange, that we'll start working on it down there, and it will proceed. It'll probably be a two-year to three-year project somewhere in there, but, but at least, you know, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel down there. I will continue working for that, and at a moment's notice, I will be in my vehicle headed to Montgomery if there's a chance that I get some money. Because money for roads is the hardest thing in the world to get. You get, you get money for just a variety of reasons almost, but roads are the hardest to get money for. But you got to dig in between, between Montgomery and Washington, D.C. Uh, occasionally you look out, and with Mr. Cooper, who is over, uh, he lives over in Gunnersville, he's got an office over there, the outlet director, uh, he can come by here, and he does a lot of times on his own. He don't even stop. He'll just drive through Coleman County, look at the roads, and so forth. But I've got a good relationship with him, and we intend to maintain that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Williams. First of all, I'd like to thank all y'all for having me here tonight. If elected as your next place to county commissioner, I'll always have your best interest at heart. I have that open door policy. You can call me home, you can call me at the courthouse. You can probably find out town anywhere I'm around. I'll do what I can for you when I can. Thank you. Carrie Watson, running for Coleman County Commission Place One. I keep hearing all this about budgets and teamwork. Well, I was a deputy sheriff for 16 years, and I know what teamwork is. I run my budget at home. I know what a budget is. It may not be as big, but I know when I've got my budget, I don't go buy new vehicles when I don't keep them. I've got a budget that I'm going to stand with. If I'm elected your commissioner, I'm going to work hard for you. And I'm going to keep your money like it's my money. I'm going to maintain it. And I'm going to work every day to prove to you that I'm doing what's right for the people of this county with no agenda but to be fair and equal to each person in this county. As I look out in the county and I meet people, that's all they're asking now. They just want somebody that's going to return their phone calls and answer their questions. And it may be not the answer they want to hear, but they just want to hear an answer. So my dad, when we were growing up, our dad raised us one way. He raised us to treat people like we want to be treated treat people with respect, and a man's handshake is only as good as it's worth. And when you elect me, you're called the county commissioner in place one, that's what you'll have. Thank you. You know, if we go back to the very beginning when I first announced I was going to run, I believe it was in October. You know, the main thing I said was my decision to run. I have no agenda for running. I hold nothing against anybody. And if there's one thing that I want you to remember is that I told my wife when I decided to run, I said, regardless, I'm going to be true to myself and true to my family. And so I haven't gone out here and told people, blow a bunch of smoke and tried to tell people stuff just for the mere fact of trying to get them to vote for me. I've been honest with people. I've made no promises. The reason I've made a, a, a decision, I've had a lot of people ask me things, but I have not made any promises because once you get in there, there may not be funding to do that. And so, I, you know, I don't want to tell people, yes, I'm going to do something and not be able to do that. You know, for 27 years, I've worked for the city of Coleman in law enforcement, and for 
27 years, I've had to deal with facts, not assumptions. And so and that's exactly the way I run the business if I'm elected to come the county commission place to. That, you know, we're going to deal with facts. We can't assume things, and that's the way we're going to run our business. I appreciate your support, and I ask you to please vote for me on June 3rd. Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank the uh, Golden Times and the Chamber for hosting this forum. And uh, in, a, in a closing statement, you know, it takes, uh, when you first get elected, it's going to take you about two years to develop relationships with outside agencies to fully understand the working of the county government. Also, I think that's the most important part of being a county commissioner is the management of the money. Uh, we have all these employees that expect their paycheck every other week. They want the benefits. We have to provide the departments with the material and the equipment for them to work with. And that's on my mind every day. And we talk about doing new things. I gave an example a while ago about uh, combining the road departments and then saving the taxpayers a million dollars a year. Well, we didn't quit at that. We're continually looking at things. We're looking at uh, purchasing another spray truck and, and doing more spraying because bush hogging is so slow and so expensive. So it's, it's an ongoing process, and, uh, and I take this job serious. We've, uh, when I came in, the economy was about as low as you could get. Uh, we have uh, bought a lot of equipment. We have given pay raises and benefits. Uh, we have the money put back to uh, this ATRIP program, a million and a half dollars. So I have been a good manager of your tax dollars. And I will continue to be a good manager of your tax dollars. And to me, that's kind of the secret of being a good commissioner. And I simply run on my record. And I would like to ask for your vote and support for June 3rd. Thank you. Right, thank you to each of our candidates for being here tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to come and share your thoughts and comments with our community. And I'd also like to thank each of you in the audience for being here this evening. We hope you found this event informative, and we encourage you to participate in the primary election on June 3rd and on the general election on November 4th. Thank you all for being here.